Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. And today we're looking at our Through the Bible series, session number two, Exodus chapter 20. So if you would do us a huge favor, make sure you click that like button or better yet, follow those links to register your attendance on the cards that look just like if you were here present signing in too. We remember we're tracking the attendance, so this helps us to keep track of you. Let's get going with our opening song. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Another city up in flames, another life lost in vain. Another gunshot echoes, will it ever change? Oh, everyone's got someone to blame. For the hurt and the fear and hate But in the darkness and the madness We will pray Oh, heaven come down Heaven come down Heaven come, heaven come down Heaven come down Heaven come down Heaven come, heaven come down Everybody's drawing lines Shot in the pit Choosing sides, searching for the truth in the midst of all these lies. But what it take to finally see peace in the face of tragedy? Nothing on earth can give us what we really need. Oh, heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down, heaven come, heaven come down. Heaven come down, heaven come down. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly sections of Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The just decrees of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, in keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his error? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. At this time, we take a moment to pause and reflect upon our sin, those sins that we've committed against our God and our neighbor. So let's pause a moment, reflect. If there's anything heavy that's on our heart, let's put that at the foot of the cross, and then we will make confession of our sin. We pause.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son, Jesus, to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great where feet may fail And there I find you in the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stand And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start
Hi, boys and girls. It's Deaconess Kim with the children's message. Have you ever seen cautions or warning signs? Like this one, maybe. What does this mean? It means stop, right? What about this one? This one is for a railroad crossing. It means look out for trains. And if you go to the pool, you might see a sign like this one. Do you know what this one means? It means no diving. The water is too shallow. And this one, you might see a lot of different places. This one just means caution, look out. It means there's something dangerous and you need to be careful. There are a lot of signs like these in our lives and they're meant to keep us safe and remind us of things we should or shouldn't do. And just like these signs, God does the same thing. He gives us warnings and tells us not to do things that might hurt us or other people. We learn about those things in the Bible. But just like some people in the world ignore caution signs, we ignore God's cautions too. People in the Bible times did it all the time. Over and over and over again, God told the people in the Bible not to worship pretend gods. He said, caution, don't do that. Those fake gods can't help you. But over and over and over again, the people didn't listen. They turned away from God. And sometimes we do that too. Our God might not be a statue. It might be our pillow or our favorite sports team or just our selfish heart. We turn away from God, choosing to follow something or someone else. But the good news is that even when we turn away from God, he never turns away from us. God sent Jesus to take all the punishment of our sins on the cross. And we now know the one way to get to God, right? That's right. It's Jesus. When we walk with Jesus, we have God's forgiveness. And that's really good news. Now your challenge this week is just for you. I want you to look at your life. See if you can find any idols or fake gods in your life. Basically, what tries to distract you from spending time with God? That might be an idol that you need to turn away from. Will you pray with me? Dear God, I'm sorry that sometimes I turn away from you. Thank you for forgiving me. Help me see the things that distract me from you. Help me turn away from them and turn toward you. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, friend of sinners, we have strayed so far away. We got down people in your name, but the sword was never ours to swing. Jesus, friend of sinners, the truth becomes so hard to see. The world is on their way to you, but they're tripping over me. Always looking around, but never looking up. I'm so double-minded. A plague-dyed saint with dirty hands, with a heart divided. Oh, Jesus, friend of sinners. Open your eyes to the world at the end of our pointed fingers. Let our hearts be led by mercy. Help us reach with open hearts and open doors. Oh, Jesus, friend of sinners, break our hearts for what breaks yours. Jesus, friend of sinners, the one who's riding in the sand, made the righteous turn away and the stone fall from their hands. Help us to remember we are all the least of these. Let the memory of your mercy bring your people to their knees. Nobody knows what you're for, only what we're against when we judge the wounded. 
What if we put down our signs, crossed over the lines, and loved like you did? Oh, Jesus, friend of sinners, open our eyes to the world at the end of appointed fingers. Let our hearts be led by mercy. Help us reach with open hearts and open doors. Oh, Jesus, friend of sinners, break our hearts for what breaks yours. You're the lost cause. You reach out for the outcast, for the leper and the lame. They're the reason that you came. Lord, I was the lost cause. And I was the outcast But you died for sinners like me A grateful leper at your feet Cause you are good You are good And your love endures forever You are good You are good reach with open hearts and open doors. Oh, Jesus, friend of sinners, break our hearts for what breaks yours. Our scripture lesson and the basis for our message this morning is from Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. Now when all the people saw the thunder, and the flashes of lightning, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled, 
And they stood far off and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, lest we die. Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. The people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the people of Israel, You have seen for yourselves that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make gods of silver to be with me, nor shall you make for yourselves gods of gold. An altar of earth you shall make for me, and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. If you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it out of hewn stones. For if you wield your tool on it, you profane it. You shall not go up by the steps to my altar, that your nakedness be not exposed on it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue with our Through the Bible series, today we find ourselves in Exodus. We started with Genesis, the fall, but more importantly, God's promise of crushing Satan's head. Today, we look at what it means to be called as God's people, the blessing that it indeed is to be called by our God to be his people to serve him. Now, we could actually back up a little bit and we first see this great calling through our father, Abraham, back in Genesis 12. But remember, he is called to be a blessing not just to himself or his family, that is, him and Jesus alone, but rather he is called to be a blessing to all nations, to all peoples. And that's where we pick it up today in Exodus. In Exodus, we find God's people have been in slavery for over 400 years. The Exodus story is a story of God saving his people from slavery. Indeed, they were slaves in the land of Egypt. God sent Moses to deliver his people from Pharaoh. Remember those 10 plagues? And then to cap it off, finally, Pharaoh kicks God's people out there and says, go ahead and worship your God in the wilderness. But he changes his mind and he pursues God's people. He has them backed up against the Red Sea. And then God parts the water. And God's people safely get to the other side while Pharaoh and his army is drowned. See, this is the greatest salvific event that we see in the entire Old Testament. Now, before we get going too far on there, is we have to remember that, that God didn't choose his people based on the fact that they were a mighty empire or overly smart people or greatly attractive people or something along the lines of that. No, God does just the opposite of what we would do when it comes to picking out a people that we would want to have for ourselves. Remember, God describes them as a stiff-necked people, ones that, aren't, that are stubborn and not willing to follow him. But this gets us to the good point, right? We don't always know why God chooses who he chooses to be his people, but what we do know is it is God the one that chooses his people. So as he selected the children of Israel, even though they were slaves, he called them to be his people. The same is true for you and for me as God choosing his people. There isn't anything special about us. As the creed explains, right? The Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith, 
in the same way he calls, gathers, and enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it. Remember, as St. Paul said, while we were yet sinners, Christ chose us to be his people. This is how God always works. We don't always understand why he chooses people the way he chooses people, but God's the one that gets to choose. Why did God choose me or why did God choose you? Well, see, it tells us a lot more about God than it does about us. And we see that God is loving, that God is caring. Just as he didn't get rid of Adam and Eve in the garden, but rather showed mercy and compassion by promising them a savior from their sin, he wants us to know about his great love too. And of course, we see that in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that Jesus died for you and for me. And we know that no greater love is this than that one would lay down his life for his friends. And that is exactly what God does for you and for me. And he makes us his children through Jesus Christ. Why? Well, for the same reason he called Abraham, for the same reason he rescued his people from slavery. He called us so that we too could be a blessing. God's people are meant to be a blessing. His people and his church today, this is what we are called to be. This is what we are called to do, to be a blessing. Since God chooses his people, then he chooses what we are to be like in serving him for his great purpose. This is how it should work, right? And we understand this. God is the one that chooses us. He also tells us how he wants us to behave. How many Eagle Scouts do we have out there? Show of hands. Of course, I know I can't see you raising your hands out there, but, but if you know anything about Eagle Scouts, right, there are requirements. Why are there requirements? Well, exactly. Because this is what it means to be an Eagle Scout. The same is true for God's people. We have requirements. An Eagle Scout is respected because of that specifically that it is quite an accomplishment. And it's no different for God's followers, for God's people. We are given requirements so that we do exactly what God would have us do, that is to be shining lights for him. You see, this is how you and I are to be a blessing. Exodus 20 is all about those requirements. And honestly, we don't, always have to like them, do we? <laughs> God doesn't ask our opinion on whether or not he thinks that these are good requirements or not, but rather he says that these are the ways in which my people will behave. They will obey these things. Remember, Jesus warned us about this in John chapter 17, that we are in the world right? But we are not of the world. If we don't follow God's Ten Commandments, well, then we are simply living like other people in this world. Because we know that God's commandments are oftentimes seen as something that is in opposition to God's commands. But when we follow those big ten, right, we are not of the world. Sure, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. And people have always struggled with God's plan for his people. Remember after the Lord delivered them from slavery, rescued them from Pharaoh, how did they respond to that? Well, they respond by grumbling. Remember it says the people spoke against God and against Moses, why have you brought us out of the land of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. 
Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many of the people of Israel died. Now you might say, well, God was starving them and and very infrequently provided them water. (laughs) But you can clearly see that this isn't truly the case. You see, I think there's a little bit of symbolic behavior going on in this for sure. You see, the grumbling was brought about because they were dissatisfied with their lives. They were referring back to how much better they had it when they were slaves in the land of Egypt. Now, how crazy is that? But the truth of the matter was, is that They were suffering in that wilderness because they disobeyed God about going into the promised land in the first place. They chose this life, this wilderness wandering, and then they were complaining to God about that. You see, sometimes we face these same sort of things in our life, right? Complaining about our 401ks or complaining about our popularity, or complaining that we don't have this, that, or the other thing. We see that that our discontentment with the life that God has called us to live for Him, well, that's clearly rebellion against Him too. Just like God provided a solution for the fiery serpent snakes in the wilderness, that is, They still bit them, but God gave them something to look at that would spare their lives so that they wouldn't die. And today, well, we have to look to Jesus too to remember that we're not living for this world, but rather we're living for the life to come. And that whatever it is that God has us to do in this life, whether we're rich or poor, or whether we are in illness or in health, that we understand that we are living for our Lord, living for our God. We truly embrace life as God's people when we see whatever it is that's before us in light of Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 21. See, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up, Take possession as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has told you. Do not fear or be dismayed. You see, life is about trusting God. Each of us is given a life to live in Jesus Christ. Of course, it's not the same. Each of us has a different path. Each of us maybe bears a different burden. But remember... God is the one that is in charge. And we need to trust that God is the one that is leading the way. We know that we are forgiven. We know that we are in a right relationship with Him. So when bad things come in our life, it's not because He is punishing us or that God's waiting for us to mess up so He could press the button on the shock collar to just mess with us. That's not what it's about at all. But we are reminded by the temptations and the trials in this life that we are always dependent upon God and that we need to trust that God is working all things for His good purposes. See, we don't need to act out in rebellion, but rather seek God's ways. Trusting and knowing that when we follow after Him, when we follow the commandments of our God, that life will go good for us. Joshua certainly led God's people in this way. Remember in Joshua 24, verse 15, he writes, Choose this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Remember, Joshua was one of those young ones that said, we should take possession of the land. Unfortunately, his voice didn't prevail. And he also wandered in that wilderness for 40 years. But most importantly, we remember that Joshua clung to the promise of blessing that he knew was coming his way. And because of that, 
he loved God and was willing to love others too. See, this is what God calls us to do too. Jesus gave us that new command that we were to love one another. And we got through through John's uh, letters and, and this love was repeated over and over again that we were to love one another and that they would know we are Christians by our love. You see, Jesus also said that we love him when we keep his commandments. And Jesus has also showed us that love, right? That he indeed laid down his life for you and for me. Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. And you see, when we follow Jesus, when we are obedient to the commands that are given to our God, well, we give testimony to Jesus, the Savior of the world. So let us continue in following Jesus and showing his love. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you the different options that you have for giving. And we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue his kingdom work among us. Our announcements for this Sunday include uh, Team Jesus, we're looking for ushers. So if you'd like to serve in that capacity, uh, follow the link in our Team Jesus News where you could sign up to do that. We'll make sure you get trained accordingly. Just wanted to point out too that for all of our events now, you can go to our website and there is a button that links you to be able to sign up to all of the events. You can see them all in that one place. So please, if you're looking for an opportunity to serve, go to our website to see those opportunities that you can serve. Those are our announcements. At this time, we'll make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers for this Sunday include Mina. This is Diana Smith's great niece who has some health issues and she's at Children's Mercy in Arizona. Also for Alan Hickman, just continued healing for his broken bone. And prayers for the Porter Neidhold family at his passing. This is a former neighbor of the Troxels. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, empower your church to be obedient to following the great commission of making disciples. Especially, we ask you to bless our classes, the discipleship journey, and our Through the Bible series, so that we are better equipped to share the hope of Jesus we have with others. Open doors to our top ten list so that we have opportunities to bring the lost into a closer relationship with your Son and our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician of body and soul, we thank you for all who work we, with you to bring healing to the sick, relief to the disabled, and comfort to the suffering. Help us never to forget that you are the source of all healing and intervene for good in the lives of those among us who are hurt and in need of healing, especially for Mina and for Alan. Please be with those mourning the death of loved ones, especially the Neidhold family. Death is certainly a reminder to us all to be ready for our final call 
Keep us always in your saving faith where we find comfort in the certain hope of the resurrection of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you called us to be your own through the power of baptism. Help us to daily remember you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Mason, Matt, Emma, Troy, Nancy, Killian, Cadence, Jane, Jeremy, and Justin as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father, who instituted, ordered, and blessed the estate of marriage between a man and a woman, we give you thanks and praise for this most precious gift. You care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. So we rejoice with Mitch and Selena, Steve and Denise, Mike and Amy, Gabe and Shelley, Roger and Ellen as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. can hold us back, nothing can tear us apart, not life, not death, not the in-between, this is just the start, don't let them keep you down, don't let them push you out, we're made to live, to be fierce like lions, love and forgive, just keep moving on, just keep pushing ahead, yeah, the new Chasing down the dead of night Bringing hope to the street There's a new way, a better life Only one can set the active free He can bring sight back to the blind Show the lame how to walk Make the dead alive Oh, just keep moving on Just keep pushing ahead Yeah, the new has come And the old is dead Just keep moving on Keep your eyes on the Be alright, power, power, we got that power.